talk to me about Kid Ajima a little bit. Yeah, so that relationship started in 01 when he really came on the scene and so did I, right? We were in his home country. He, I think, won the silver in the 100 and I won the gold in the 200. And and then Walker, it, right? Yeah, and then it really started to take off from there. And it's. I think it, it was very organic, the relationship. I would say that we recognized each other's presence. We There was a heightened level of like, intensity when we would get in the pool or be next to each other, just like any two competitors, right? Like I would say two alpha dogs walking in the backyard, like they're definitely posturing. Right. There was a lot of that. So early in our relationship, it was a lot of that. Like how, who are you? What are you good at? What's going on? Are you going to be around a while? My plan is this, that kind of thing. How um, old were you at that stage in 2001? You didn't swim at the 2000 Olympics, right? No, I missed it. Yeah. I was okay. third twice. What was, I was shoot. I think I was 18 or 19. I was 19. 19 so both, and... both you guys were at the start of your journeys, your careers. You, you're both probably around the same age, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then a lot of the national team folks were showing me a lot of his film, like watching the way he hit his line, the way he mm. did certain things. And, and they were bringing him up a lot. And I was like, okay, let's study that. Let's understand what he's doing and really figure it out. Because at that point, breaststroke for me was get stronger get a better kick, be able to deal with the pain longer, right? Like handle endurance and everything. And then he was m not built like most. He was, mm. was five, nine, 180, or maybe like 170 pounds. Like he was not mm. a big dude compared to what the guys are now. But uh, then we, where it really heated up was 04 Olympic games. So 03 worlds in Barcelona, um, he smokes me in the final of the hundred breasts, breaks the world record, goes 59.7. And I remember walking off that meet, one, realizing I was a player, like, okay, it, it, 2001 Worlds was not a fluke. You're here to stay. Yeah. Like, you're going to be fine. You're in the final again. You're buying for medals. There was a lot of validity for me as a high-level breaststroker at that point internationally in my mindset. At that point, it was like, okay, let's focus on 04 Olympic Games go into trials, break the world record, both. And, and it was just like a media blew it up. Right. They were just like, here it is the showdown mm -hmm. between Brendan and, and the former world record holder. And, and then we raced hard in Athens and he came away victorious, but then, and then I don't think he was planning on me countering. And then in 05, I came back 06, I broke the world records again. So I think he was, I won in 04. This was great. I'm a, the country loves me, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I just, <laughs> By my actions in 05 and 06, pretty much awoken the monster again. He comes back in seven and eight. We're racing again. So it was like this back and forth. But I would say by this posturing of two alpha males, like yeah. it shifted right after maybe like 06 when we'd see each other and I had broken the world records right after he broke the world records. And it was like, hey, man, I recognize you. You're awesome. Let's go. And then honestly, like I would show up at the pool deck every day, just going like, he's eight hours ahead of me. So he's already worked out. So he's mm -hmm. already once. So my mindset was like David, even though I was trying to swim like Goliath. And I was just like, every day I was acting like the underdog going like, he's eight hours ahead of me. He's already done more work than me. I got to keep giving it more. And so that was really what sharpened the knife for me in racing him and really just like, got me through a lot of the grind and, and got me through a lot of the, a lot of the time.